Good morning and happy Sabbath. The songwriter said, let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord for he is kind, for his mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. It is a privilege this morning to be here. I was um, listening to the news last night and we understand that there is a, um, a train that being derailed yesterday. Those people did not know whether or not they would make it home. Um, while we are at it, we ask that you pray for the family who have, been, um, who have lost loved ones. And let us give thanks because we are here this morning. Let us praise the Lord because his mercy endured forever. I pray that the Father, the God of creation, would impart to us the riches of his spirit and wisdom of his love to reveal his work and to, and to instill in us the deepest intimacy with him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just want to give you thanks this morning because you have given us the opportunity where we can come before your presence to give you thanks. As we continue to study your word, Lord, we pray that you may give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and that, Lord Jesus, we may impart what we have learned to others around us. Be with us now, be in our presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Claudia, um, and good morning and welcome to Croydon Sabbath School panel. We're glad that you're tuning in with us. Today is the 4th of June, and if you're watching live, it's just gone 10 o'clock British Standard Time. But if you're tuning in on demand, we're glad that you've decided to join as well. It's uh, raining outside at the moment, but we thank God for the rain in this country, especially too much of any kind of weather causes problems. So we need the water as well as the sunshine. But wherever you are, we trust that you are enjoying the sun, S-O-N, of righteousness, who, brains, who, who, who gives us his blessings and his mercies each day. Uh, a special shout out to those may, who may be getting up extra early and tuning in live on this Sabbath morning. So we want to hear from you as an interactive Bible study session. And uh, shortly on the screen, you will see um, where you can download a copy of the Sabbath School Quarterly if you don't have one so that you can follow it live. Good morning to those tuning in on Life Radio. We're glad that you're tuning in with us today. So as mentioned, it's an interactive lesson study. So if you're on YouTube or live stream, please send in your comments, questions on, in the chat in the usual way. If you're tuning in on Life Radio, you can send in your comments to studio at liferadio.uk and the WhatsApp number is 07311409409. So we have, as usual, a panel to help us with our discussion, but we do want to hear from you as well, obviously. But before we go to our panel, let me say good morning to my co-host, our pastor. Good morning, Pastor Royston. Good morning, Elder Johnny. It's indeed a, a wet, rainy, windy day. Um, I was listening to the weatherman yesterday, and he says, I don't know where the rain is going to fall um, tomorrow. But as usual, after a sunny blast, after a hot uh, weekend, then suddenly we have the rain, Elder Johnny. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but, but you know what? The sun of righteousness mm -hmm. shall arise with That's healing right. in the swing. So um, it's nice to be here. It's nice to be with you as usual. It's, you know, it's, you, know you top my week off just sharing, um, you know, this um, holy place with you and just digging into the word. And whilst I'm doing that, let's give a, um, a, a shout out to Jennifer Morgan. Um, she lost her mom oh um, on the 28th of May. So our mm. thoughts, Jennifer, um, are with you and yes. your family. Also, we want to give a shout out to Sister Shirley and, and Faith and mm. Tanset and Paulette. Yes. Um, they lost, and other boys of Les, um, they lost um, a, a father, a mm. stepfather. We want to give a shout out um, to the family to let them know that we are praying for them. Indeed. Elder Johnny. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Condolences um, from us to you. 
Um, on our panel, we welcome back some faces that you know. Let me say good morning to Sister Shanika Benjamin. Good morning, Shanika. Good morning, Uncle Johnny. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Indeed. And a face that we haven't seen for a little while, but you should remember. It's Sita. Good morning, Sister Sita Zulu. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Glad that you're joining us today. So, Pastor, as we have our prayer, maybe you want to just remember those who are suffering bereavement as well before we go into our lesson study. Over to you, sir. Lord, we send condolences to Shirley, Brandon, and the family. I, I know Les quite well, and he was a caring husband. Be with the family at this very sad moment. We pray for Sandra also, Blake, who lost her sister, Sonia Burke, rather. Mm -hmm. um, she's a member of this church, and we, we, we ask that your, your hands will be upon her. We pray for Jennifer Morgan, who has been a faithful member of this church, and on the 28th, she lost her mom. Pray for her and her family. Lord, all those who are losing and all those who are experiencing pain, we pray for them. Lord, the song that rings out loud in my ear is the golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. Come, Lord Jesus, because wherever you are, death has no power. It loses its sting. So, Lord, bless us as we dig into your lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. So we're at lesson number 10 in our study of the book of Genesis. And today we're looking at Jacob to Israel, or, or Jacob and Israel, whichever way you want to interpret the, the way the title was presented. Our memory verse this morning comes from Genesis 32, verse 28. And I believe we have, yes, we have Sister Sherry in our midst. Good morning, Sister Sherry, if you can share our memory verse with us. Johnny. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. God bless you. The memory verse is taken from Genesis 33, verse 28, from the New King James Version. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sister Sherry. We're going to be touching on that as we go into our lesson. So Jacob finally leaves Laban and is returning home, but he will have to face his greatest fear, the anger of his brother Esau. We studied this week of his name change from Jacob to Israel. Now, Name changes when you think about them, whether it's through marriage or whether it's through deed poll, that's what they call it over here, the kind of legal way of changing your name. But this change normally accompanies a, a change or a turning point in the life of the person. And this was the case for Jacob as well. Pastor, you know, when we accept the gift of salvation, we too get a new name. That name is Christian. I know there is a, there's one person in a church, I believe, who, who actually has the first name Christian, but we become a Christian, and that's like a name change. So here's my question to you, Pastor. What does it mean to have the name Christian bestowed onto you? Thanks for such a powerful question, Elder Joyner. Let me just give a, a, a hello to Sister Angela Green. I haven't seen her for some time, so let me welcome her all the way in Spanish down there. Um, the name, you know, whenever I do a um, baby blessing, I, 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 I spend a lot of time talking about the names of, of the children. You know, sometimes you wonder how people give a child a name. Um, there are instances where the law has got to step in to, to block parents from giving their children a certain name. Because name can be a hindrance or it can be a help. Names can hold you down or names can help you out. Um, just giving a name 
Sometimes we say it sounds good, but actually, in almost every culture, name has a meaning. It has a significance. You know, I know a lot of stars are now giving their children some very strange name, North, Star, South, um, Apple. Um, some, some, some names you wonder, why would you give these children these names? And, and the, the point is, they said, they would like their children to stand out. So here's a name that not just makes you stand out, but here's a name that connects you to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. Here's a name that connects you with someone who has the power to change, to transform. Here's a name that enables you not just to be um, a child of this earth, but to be a child of the earth to come. And the name is Christian. Christian is a name that was given to anyone who follows Christ. So when somebody calls you a Christian in olden days, it means that your image, your lifestyle, your thinking, your thoughts, everything about you was about Christ. I wonder if people will call me Christian. Yeah, Royston, yes. Johnny, yes. But Christian, are we reflecting Christ? So that name, Elder Johnny, was a name that anyone who wants to look like, speak like, behave like Christ, that name was attached to that person. Mm. I wish people will stop calling me Royston and say Christian. Mm. Interesting. It, it's funny, as you mentioned that, I remembered back to school and there was this particular young man who at any slight thing is ready to say, and you call yourself Christian, you know, but I haven't got money to give him or food to give him or sharing homework or something like that, and you call yourself Christian. But roll forward. Thank the Lord he's a baptized member of this church. But to save any blushes, I wouldn't mention his name, but he knows who he is. <laughs> Wonderful. So here's my question going out to you. What does it mean to have the name Christian bestowed onto you? Just share your thoughts. you agree with what Pastor said? Let's have your thoughts online and even from the congregation as well. So while you're thinking about that, Jacob, not knowing what would befall him, sent word ahead to his brother, I guess a way of appeasing. But the word that he got back from the messengers was that Esau was on his way to meet him with 400 men. Jacob, now greatly afraid and distressed, cries out to the Lord. So, Sister Shanika, if you can pick this up for us, please. Genesis 32, verses 22 through to 31. What happens there? Okay, I'm reading from the New King James Version. I'm going to read verses 24 to 31, because the first two verses are basically just Jacob sending his children, his wife, and his servants away. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. So here we see a very, very pivotal moment in Jacob's life. And I personally have so many questions, like why did this start in the first place? Why were they wrestling all night? Imagine wrestling someone all night. And also, what was Jacob saying throughout? What was God saying throughout? Because I think it's been a very interesting exchange to see. However, what we do know is that Jacob wrestled with God and survived. Imagine wrestling with God and surviving. He survived it. Imagine the strength Jacob had to wrestle with God and survive because God then touched the hip. And just from one touch, the hip was out of joint. And through having that hip out of joint, Jacob was humbled. And that was absolutely necessary for him to come away from his deceptive past and become Israel. And that Jacob to Israel moment is another, if not 
one of the most significant moments in that story, but also in his life. The change of his name from Jake, which means deceiver, to Israel, which was a name that signified much, much, much better things, signified called Prince of God. So it pointed towards not only him becoming Israel, but also pointed towards God's chosen people. And that of God's chosen people of Israel, that's where Jesus is going to be offended from. So it was very, very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, this thing of wrestling, it's... But listen, let me come to Sister Sita first. Sita, you got anything you want to comment on from what Shanika shared there? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that um, Jacob began the night believing his greatest need was to escape from Esau. And um, he ended the night believing his greatest need was to trust in the blessing of God's promise. And what changed him from fearing man to trusting God's word was prolonged and painful rest. With our greatest ally will rest with us and we are desperate enough to send a message to us. We're having a few problems with connecting there. Your, your um, connection maybe is not too right, but um, maybe if you just rejoin again or something, just make sure everything is okay, because we know you've got some important things to say. So we'll just give you a, a, a moment to just double check your connection. We are, hopefully our AV team will be able to help there as well. But just um, picking up on some of those points, and we want to hear from you in our congregation as well as, well as those online, but this concept of wrestling, I just want to know some more from, from yourselves and your understanding of wrestling with God. But in the meantime, Pastor, um, any comments coming in on the, the issue of the name change or even comments on, from what people have shared at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, our, 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 our online members are ready to fight and, and uh, wrestle, you know, their thoughts. Um, brother, a member said the name change is not uncommon in the Bible, but the most, I'm going to read, I'm reading this one, but the most anticipated name changes for those who have conquered the world, when we reach heaven, God will change our names. Obviously, that, that's ultimately the new identity that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Rodney says um, it's, it's, it's the power of the opponent, you know, the wrestling that caused the name to change. And he also mentioned that his grandmother, he asked his grandmother, you know, what does the name Christian mean? And grandmother says, a follower of Christ. And he said that caused him to leave what he was doing and become a Christian. What a powerful testimony. Elaine says that she, she will represent him well. The name Christian is a, is a sign that she's representing Christ well. Um, Donna says, child of the most high, uh, chosen generation. Erlene says, part of God's family. Eliza says, fully committed. That's what it means. K and T, I like this. K and T says, Ever, it, 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 it signifies um, that you're emulating who Christ is. Um, Yvette Bradford, who I haven't seen for a long time, says, a true follower of Christ, not, not only in name, but in deed. Um, uh, Jennifer says, a Christian is not in name only, but action, in, you know, it's, it's, it's what you do. Um, Bev Blake says, I'm glad to have the, I'm glad to have the Christian uh, name because it reminds me of what I used to be, and now I am a child of a king. That sounds like a testimony, Ella Johnny, mm. coming on there. Um, uh, my good friend Peter Burton says, when in hospital five years ago, a nurse, I'm reading this one as a testimony, to ask me one morning, are you a Christian? When I, uh, when, I, uh, when I said yes, she said, I thought so, and I have been praying for you all night. Amen. What did you see when I was sleeping, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was asleep? So I, I, I'm waiting for um, um, Peter Burton to tell, me, tell us the rest of the story. I like this kind of story. Auntie M. Sim, Maureen says, I think it's, a, it's an honor and also a great responsibility to sustain the meaning of your name, a name that shouldn't be given and taken lightly. It's something you would give your child who has no choice. Uh, it's, it's something you would give your child who has no choice in it. In other words, um, you know, that's a great responsibility that we have. So if you're naming your child, be careful of the name mm. that you give to that child. So true, so true. I, I want to jump back to Sita, if I may, because I know she was sharing some important points. Let, let, let's try you again, Sita. Can you share your point with us again? Yeah, can you hear me? That's better, yeah. 
Um, so now I was just going to say that Jacob began um, the night believing his greatest need was to escape from Esau, and he ended the night believing that his greatest need was to trust in the blessing of God's promise. And um, what changed him from fearing man to trusting God's word was prolonged and painful wrestling with God. Sometimes in our greatest battle with unbelief, our um, greatest ally will wrestle with us until we are desperate enough to just to say, just like Jacob, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Yes, yes, powerful. Thank you. Thank uh, you and Elder Johnny, that's a very powerful thought because here's a thought that Je uh, Bailey Thompson says. She says, Jacob was 79 years old, right? And, uh, you know, well, I think she said he was not as strong as he would when he was younger. Um, but, 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 but he was in a, he thought he was in a physical, just as, you know, um, synchronized with what um, Sita says. He thought he was wrestling with man, mm. but he was actually wrestling with God. He was in, not in a, a physical battle. He was in a spiritual struggle. And, and what is interesting, she says, is that regardless of the struggle that Jacob was in, he was unwilling to yield. Mm. And, and this is critically important because sometimes we think we're fighting physically, but it's actually a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And if you don't, he, he, it, is, it is not yielding that he lost. You see? Remember, God had to disjoint him mm. for him to gain the victory. So sometimes what God has to do is to push us out of the way to make us successful. And that sounds like an oxymoron because we, we might believe, oh, I might stay, I might be okay. But God had to physically disjoint him to save him. And that's, that's the whole point, that um, God's attitude at this time. Now, let, actually, let me throw it out there because I, I want to know what our listeners... So let, let me go out with another question. Again, just thinking about this, this wrestling. Here's my question. Have you wrestled with God? Who won? All right, that's my question. If you've wrestled with God, we want to know who won that wrestle. Because it's this concept of wrestling that I'm hoping our, our, our viewers, our listeners, will understand what this actually means. Yeah? So here's my question going out. We want to hear from you in our congregation as well. Have you wrestled with God? Have you ever wrestled with God in the past? Tell us who won. Okay. So that's, that's the point that we want to hear. We're just um, fixing our, our connections to just make sure that everything is okay. We're having a few technical problems, but hopefully we're going to be able to... Um, uh, continue. Right, so at the moment, just for our panelists at home, you, you're not going to be able to hear everything, so let me just uh, let them know that we're going to get them back online shortly. So, so Pastor, in the, in the meanwhile, um, before we continue with our, with our format, I mean, just thinking about um, this concept of Jacob being a human being, and he soon recognized then that this person he was wrestling with was not a human being, hence he was asking for the blessing. But surely there must have been something that, from, from God's point of view, because he could have done more to him than just touched his hip. So what is this saying about God, you know, from your point of view? What is this saying about God in this concept, in this time of wrestling? Uh, you know what, Elder Johnny, I think, and, and our viewers, and I'm sure members in church will come with their point of view. I, th I think it's, you know what, there's something, I preach a sermon about mercy, and the ultimate mercy giver is God himself. Because, um, you know, God is omnipotent. And, and, and as, as Bailey says, Jacob at this time was getting old. He wasn't as strong as he used to be. But obviously he was a strong man. Because anybody who has the power to wrestle with the divine mm. physically, and this was, a, this was not just a physical struggle. It was, a, it was not just a spiritual struggle. It was also a physical match. And, and, and Jacob was outnumbered. He was out, this, this is not a word by the way, he was out strength. Um, he was outmanned, which is a word. Um, he was out everything, but, yeah. he, but he recognized that he was, you know, this was the fight of his life, you know? And, and he decided, listen, man, I'm not going to stop this thing. 
But, but then it shows that God had to dumb down on his... Here's a point. God had to dumb down on his strength. That's the point. We need to understand that. God had to pull back on his strength. Because if the divine was fighting with man, I mean, just... Just look, all God had to do was to step back and touch his hip, and everything just went. Mm. So it, it, it appears that Jacob actually was fighting with himself, you know? Mm. Um, because the moment God then step up to the ring, and notice what the text says, it was the break, it was just about to be the break of day. Dawn break, yeah. Yeah, when God decided, okay, listen, this man behaved, this man thinks he's too strong. Let me just use my, my, my fingernail and touch his hip. <laughs> and everything went out of joint. And it was for his good, because every time he limped, he remembered God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, and, and this is the point that we need to understand, that, that God is merciful. God is so merciful towards us that um, when we wrestle with him, I mean, he transforms, he changes us for our own good. Here are some points coming in, El Elder John. El I know you're getting back our, our, yeah, we're our good panelists on yeah. the line. Yeah. Um, Sister M. M. Sims, she's on target this morning. She says, I wrestle all the time. She says she never wins. Mm -hmm. She never wins. Um, Pete Burton comes back. He says, I don't know what, what, the, what the nurse saw, but she did say she normally works in any, but was assigned to my ward that night. She said that she looked at me and saw a peace, and saw a peace in me that was different, perhaps my angel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, maybe, Pete, you had a... Uh, uh, you, had, um, you had a wrestling with God that night. I don't know. Uh, God sent an angel. Uh, uh, Sister Samuel over there in Canada says, Jacob had an encounter with God and held on, decided never to let go until he knew that he was forgiven. How much time do we spend with God and leave knowing that we are blessed? Indeed. What indeed. a powerful testimony. Eliza said she wrestled with God on a daily basis. Um, and she doesn't comprehend why some things, are, some, some things are happening to good people. I think, you know, I wrestle with God sometimes. As a matter of fact, sometimes I argue with God. Rodney Simmons said, my wife and I just had a, a baby girl one year ago. Congratulations, Rodney. The whole family searched for a name and settled on Chloe, meaning your grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so Elder Johnny, um, Kenneth said he, Morgan said he wrestled with God. Um, in prayer over personal issues. Right. Um, One Love says, we all wrestled every day to serve God. We're constantly faced with challenges and, and, and struggles. Rodney, Simite, Rodney, I've spoken to Rodney. Beth says, I try to wrestle with God by not doing what he tells me to do, but mm -hmm. God always wins. Okay. Okay. Donna Davis says, I think I've been having a major wrestle with God since, age, since about seven years ago, now needing to get back to my own home. He's keeping me away for, for a purpose. I'm convinced he had been winning for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, Brother Omega says, win, wrestling with God is a win-win situation. Nobody loses. We win victory over self, and God win victory over our lives. God seemed to have lost on the cross in order to win human race. Wow! Indeed. Powerful. That's, that's a powerful. And, <laughs> and final thought. Go ahead. I, I visited a member, and you know, we, we had a conversation a couple, couple weeks ago, and she said to me, Pastor, you know, I was talking to, I, we were chatting, and then we went into some issues. She says, Pastor, have you prayed about it? And I said, yes. She said, listen, Pastor, I can tell you some of my wrestling with God. Right. And, right. you know, a powerful testimony, you know, that as the pastor, I, left, I said, you know what, if I had a little, a little of this sister's faith, mm. as small as a mustard seed, then Pastor could move mountains. And, and you know, she shared with me some personal wrestling and how God has been good to her. I think Elder Pierre Thank there you. has a point. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much. Keep your thoughts coming in from online, but we also have Elder Pierre in the congregation. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. I, I like that last thought coming from online. I would uh, say like imputed victory. God has the victory and it, give, it passes on yes. his victory to us because we would consider God to be the winner, but the memory verse said, he passes that victory unto Jacob. God said he prevailed. Yes. So we are winning in God's victory. I, I, I was amazed about how Jacob approached God in, in, verse, in chapter 32, verses uh, 9 and 10. At the beginning of that spiritual battle, 
Jacob is recognizing his nothingness and he's, I, I'm not worthy. That's where the victory comes in yeah. when you start to recognize your unworthiness. And, and, we, and we think about those two worshipers coming to the temple, uh, this Pharisee and this uh, Gentile. But the Pharisee has a sense of his self-exaltation. I, 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 I can win by myself. But the other one say, well, I am not worthy. And at the conclusion, that one that was humble win. So we can win by our humility, yes. by our total dependence upon God. And Jesus would later on say, blessed are the poor in spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good point. Uh, Elder Johnny, just two more thoughts uh, Go ahead. here. Um, Jennifer says, God is always the winner. I may have thought I won that wrestling match and walk away. But guess what? I had to come back to him for his help. So sometimes, you know, that's a good point. But here's El Chico. El Chico says, um, when he messes up, he has to wrestle with God um, to come back to God because he needs God's help and he has disappointed God. Indeed, indeed. So Jacob held on for a blessing as he saw God's face, as he saw God face to face. So let's continue. Sister Sita summarize there's a lot going on in Genesis 33 unfortunately we haven't got time for you to read it all so just summarize and expand on the key points of what happened in this chapter please um, yeah so I found this chapter very interesting um, we read in the previous chapter that Esau was on his way to meet Jacob with 400 men and so the expectation was that of a showdown between the two brothers right um, so Jacob seemed to have made extensive preparation to meet his estranged brother, as mentioned in the previous chapter. He placed his children under their respective mothers. Um, and what I really like about Jacob was that he committed his case to God and he went on his way. Um, I'm reminded of a verse in Proverbs 16, verse 7, that says, When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's ways, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Um, and we see that in the chapter when the two brothers meet. And in Genesis 33, Jacob stops seven times and bows low to um, the ground on his way to meet Esau. And he also makes reference to Esau several times as my Lord. And um, in ancient times, um, a servant may have bowed seven times to show respect to his Lord. And we can see that Jacob has done all he can to repeatedly make clear to Esau that he sees himself as a servant and Esau as the Lord. And when the two brothers meet, Esau does not draw a sword, but instead he embraces his brother with open arms and much tenderness passes with them. Both of them weep at the reunion and they are reconciled at the last, at, you know, at last despite of Jacob, just despite of what Jacob did um, to Esau 20 years ago. So much that Jacob introduces his wives and his children to Esau. Um, he also offers Esau a gift, which he modestly refuses and says he has enough. But however, Jacob insists that Esau takes his gift. And after much persuasion, he does. And so we can see that Jacob has now began, um, Jacob has now been forgiven by God and his own brother. He now probably understands the meaning of grace. Yes. Mm, powerful. Thank you very much. Um, Shanika. Just bearing in mind what's gone on there, you know, what applications do you take from uh, this episode between the brothers? When we look at Jacob and Esau's reunion, we see the importance of forgiveness, but more importantly, applying God's goodness and mercy in our lives. So Esau was actually instructed by God to show kindness to his brother, to forgive him. And before this, Jacob had been humbled as well by God. So him limping up there with his hip probably is going to evoke some sort of compassion. But his brother really has come ready to forgive him and not start this big epic battle that he was going to do in the beginning. So we can take in our lives, if we take time to know God intimately, to have a relationship with him and also listen to and heed his voice, it will help us when interacting with each other. It will give us the spirit of patience and humility, which can be very, very tough. But most importantly, it will give us the power to forgive others. Amen. Thank you very much. Pastor. 
You know, Margaret gave a testimony, she says it was in 2018, that she wrestled with God one night. And Margaret has been following us um, since we started Elder Johnny. And she says um, she wrestled with God 2018, and she had a dream. She said the next day um, she was driving her car and she had an accident. In, and, in, and she, you know, her son Christopher was in the car with her, but God rescued her. She said it was in that wrestling with God that she actually gained victory the night before the accident. Powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Omega said that, you know, sometimes we have this inner thought, or, you know, there's a wrestling with our inner thoughts, you know, that sometimes there's a hindrance to our spiritual growth. And, and you know, and we need that breakthrough so that God can help us along the way. Here are some thoughts here. Um, D, D, D. L. says, Jacob placed his family in order of who were most precious to him, mm -hmm. with Rachel and Joseph being way at the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see that deception still coming through, even after, even, even after that wrestling with God. Um, Bailey says, if we are to follow God, we must first admit our flaws and weaknesses. Only God's mercy and grace can see us to the other side of the night. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Bailey. Um, he must increase it. Esau saw that Jacob was walking differently. We must walk differently from the world. True. I like that. Uh, he was walking differently. But here's a thought. Let's go back in the text, Elder Johnny. Jacob offers gifts to Esau. Mm -hmm. And Esau says, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have enough. Remember after Esau stole his birthright and he was begging for a blessing? Did he not say, Father, bless me? And the father says, I can't bless you. I, I, I'm trying to make a point here. I'm listening. The point I'm trying to make is, um, if you just allow God to guide you, the blessing will come anyway. Mm. Um, he says he was begging for Isaac to bless him. But now his brother, who was very rich, by the way, mm. was offering gift to appease him. He says, I don't need yours, my brother. I have more than enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, so even Esau received the blessing of God. That's right. And that's important. That's right. Rodney says, the human will always win when we, you, the human will always win when we fight with God. If, if he's asking for the forgiveness of sin, that's what, like that. Why? Because he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins, 1, 1 John 1, 1, John 1, 9, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Fear had a grip on Jacob, El Chico says. Jacob, but, um, but Jacob had to make the necessary preparation to face his brother. And that's a very powerful thought, mm -hmm. that if we have certain issues that we, go, that we need to face, listen, we need to, we need to wrestle with God, because unless we wrestle with God, the enemies will overpower us. Yes, yes, great points. Keep them coming in. Let me go out with another question. To those tuning in, if you're on the radio, good morning to you. This is uh, Croydon Sabbath School panel coming out to you live. We'd love to hear from you as well. So here's my question. Share in a sentence what you've learned about grace from how maybe a family member, friends, associates have forgiven you in the past. We don't want to know the details, but it's about what have you learned where you have been forgiven and maybe didn't even deserve to what have you learned about grace from how a situation with family friends or associates may have occurred and they have forgiven you what have you learned so let's hear from you as well so jacob was given a new name he made peace with esau and he purchased land in shechem what could possibly go wrong so, Sister Shanika, if you don't mind, I'm looking for you to summarize on one of the Bible's most disturbing stories recorded. This is Genesis 34. If you could just uh, summarize that in, in, in view of time, please. Thanks. Okay. Um, just everyone watching, trigger warning. Um, there's a sexual assault here, so just... It's like a way to take care of yourself. So, I'm from New King James, but I'm going to read just the first four verses. Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, who she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. 
His soul was strongly attracted to Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father, Hamor, saying, get me this young woman as a wife. So here we have Dina, Jacob and Leah's daughter, who has gone out to see the woman of the land on her own. And while she is there, she finds up in danger. She is raped by Shechem, who, after he's violated her, says he wants to be sweet and tender to her and marry her. So Jacob says nothing, allows Dina to get married. But then we have our brothers, Simeon and Levi, who premeditate this plan to get revenge for their sister, who say, OK, you are marry our sister? You have to go by our customs. So Shechem, his father, and all the men of the city need to be circumcised. So they go, yeah, OK, we'll do it. While they're ill and vulnerable on the third day, Simon and Levi then come and kill not only Shechem and his father, but all the city, take their wealth and bring their sister back home. The whole thing is a mess. It's thickening, it's wrong on so many levels and just shows the dysfunction of this family, but also the dysfunction of the world that we live in. But again, my main question, particularly as a woman, is to Dina. How did she feel about all of this? How did she feel she's been violated, she's been given to marriage by this man and taken home by her brothers? How did she feel? What did she actually want to do? But also, why was she with the daughters alone? I'm not saying it's ever okay for men to do that take advantage, but why was she out there alone with the daughters? There's so many questions here for her. And again, it's just a shame the Bible doesn't share it, but I understand we live in a patriarchal society and you can just see it in our present day. Women are still often being violated, still being shamed, like if one situation to another, not having their say and not having a voice, which is a shame that we are, we've seen here the first rate probably in public recorded, it could have happened before, but first recorded rape in the Bible, and we still have these same issues in the present day. Mm, wow, a lot there. Thank you for summarizing it in such a, a, a way. There's so much. Sita, let me come to you. Um, here's my question. You know, are you surprised that such an account is even in the Bible? I mean, Shanika kind of summarized it there, but when you read, you know, all the detail, but are you surprised that such an account is even in the Bible? No, I'm, I'm not surprised that it's in the Bible. I think the Bible is there to, um, there to teach us some lessons and to help us understand um, since the beginning of time that there has been hardships and there still is going to be hardships. Um, but there's so many lessons that we can learn from um, from this encounter, and there's so so much that we can apply to it. And I'll try and keep it brief. But number one, um, we are in the world, but we should not be of the world. Um, we know that Jacob was living in Canaan, but he was not of Canaan. Um, his God was not their God. His ways were not their ways. Um, it shows us that we are not to adopt the habits of the world around us just because we live where we do. Um, our calling is much more higher than that. And the things that excite the person of the world are not necessarily the things that will excite the citizen of heaven. Um, number two, um, their actions destroyed any chance of being a light of the Canaanites. Um, you know, the misbehavior of Jacob's sons erased any possibility God could have used his household as a witness to the people of Canaan. Um, in similar ways, um, we too can nullify our effective witnessing to the glory of God by our own actions. And um, my last point is, you know, they asked their Canaanites to become like them by being circumcised. There wasn't any reference as to what circumcision meant as a sign of the covenant the Lord God made with Abraham. Um, you know, what of the heart was involved? Mm -hmm. um, they didn't know the true meaning behind this act. And in similar ways, we are more interested in are we more interested in, in, um, in people getting, are, are we more interested in getting people to become like us externally than we are in seeing um, their hearts change to love and honor God? So we can see there's a lot going on here and mm -hmm. um, I think we can definitely take a lot from, from this um, account. Wow, powerful thoughts. Just before I come to pastor, let me take another com comment from our congregation. Elder Pierre. Thank you so very much. I'd like to go back to uh, Jacob meeting with Esau. I believe uh, the night before Jacob explored with God the plan of salvation, which is actually a plan of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. After being reconciled with God, 
you are granted a ministry of reconciliation. And then we see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are given by God a ministry of reconciliation. So we have been reconciled to God, then we should be the one to provide reconciliation, not only with the family members, with anyone, but with God. Second point concerning Dinah, it is heartbreaking to, to consider such story in the Bible. We see that women are easy target of, of, of violence and abuse. How do we ensure that our young women are, are protected and sometimes they are abused by their supposedly protectors? Mm. Oh, a deep, deep, deep thought that <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to start answering this. But, um, you know, powerful thoughts that have, been, that have come up from our panelists and, and also Elder Pierre as well. But, Pastor, what's coming in online, please? Um, I'm going to make a point of, of what Elder Pierre said, but let me just come in with what our, our, our viewers, members online have been saying. Um, in terms of the question you asked, grace, grace has no boundary, KK says. Statue of the Lord, it's forgiveness is, is power when done. It's talking about grace. Eliza says, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Donna says, a closer relationship with family. Rodney says, it is, it is, it is redemptive. So th there are multiple views that are coming in online about the power of grace. Now, here's a point that also has been dripping in. Patrick Gale made, made such a point, Brother Omengo made such a point, and, and, and Elder Pierre reference to that is, is the reconciliation ministry of grace. Um, as, as demonstrated by Esau. Th of all the people, Esau was, 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 it was Esau, the restorative point, you see, and this is, here's the key point. The person who has been wronged is the only person who can reconcile. Mm -hmm. If you have wronged somebody, you cannot do the reconciliation. The reconciliation has to be the person who has been wronged. Mm -hmm. Take that mm, that's deep. And, and travel with that one. Many of us think that when we, when, we, when, we, when we are the guilty party, that we can reconcile. You cannot reconcile. It needs the other person who has been wronged to do the reconciliation. And think about this. In, and, and Pierre quoted um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that's 17 to 20, that's called the ministry of reconciliation, where the Bible says that we're ambassadors of reconciliation. It wasn't Esau doing the reconciling. It wasn't Jacob doing the reconciling. Esau says, my brother, it's okay. I don't need what you have. It was Esau. So sometimes, even those who we don't expect to reconcile with us, they're the ones who will reconcile. So uh, just a thought there. Well, here's, here's a thought now. It's never right that a woman is abused. However, we must remember we're living in a cruel world and we need to be careful where, where we tread. As Sita alluded to, there's, there's danger in walking. There's danger in walking. Um, but I think the point is people should be free to walk um, at any time without being encumbered by anybody. We, people must be free. But I understand the concept of walking. Here we go. Um, so Patrick Gale says, the blessing of overcoming hatred one principle we can learn from Esau example is that if we overcome hatred and, for, and forgive others, then we can help to restore peace in, in troubled relationships. Thank you for that. Um, Petty says, Diana's story is a wake-up call for the youth not to play in the devil's play group. Stay on the side of, the, of God's camp and find friends for yourself. Mm -hmm. right, right. But, you know, people say, why did she stray? Why did she go? Um, somebody says it was, it was the culture in those days um, that a woman would not normally be walked, would, would walk with somebody else. Um, but I think you should be free to walk if you want to walk anyway. Um, the point is so true, Pastor. I was unjustly wrong some years ago, and when I forgave the person for the deemed injustice, it made me feel a sense of release myself, Peter yes. Burton. Um, in, in Dinah's mingling with the daughters of the land, she was positioning herself in a dangerous territory. We need to be mindful, the individuals we mingle with, since they have influence on us. That is true. However, uh, the fact that I've walked somewhere doesn't mean that somebody should abuse me. Mm, of course. So we, we, I, I want, I'm trying to emphasize that point 
all morning because because sometimes it, Diana it looked like she you know she did the wrong thing. Yes, she did the wrong thing, but she should not have been abused. Elder Johnny, one point. Last one. The power in the text for me is not the boy's behavior. It's the silence of the father. Well, I've got a question on that, but before I take the question, we've got someone in our congregation. Sister Kim, good morning. Let's hear your point. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, Elder Johnny. Um, the Bible tells us, um, I'll just read it. Um, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Um, the first point I wanted to make about this um, is that here it's, you can um, refer to the body as your physical body, um, but you can also relate it to the body, the Church of Christ. Um, and God is telling us, he's admonishing us to um, present our bodies a living sacrifice acceptable to him. So when we have issues within our families and um, there may be, you know, um, disputes and what have you, um, and you're forgiven, um, it just reminds you that it's because of God's mercies that, um, that you've been forgiven. Um, sometimes um, when sometimes when um, your family and friends or who, whomever you may have wronged um, forgive you um, and you also know that God forgives you um, sometimes you haven't forgiven yourself and um, the next verse says that be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, in another part of the Bible, it says um, that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God's ways are higher than our ways. So where it says that we have to renew our minds and that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, we have to remember that. We have to... Um, take that on we have to um we have to change our minds we have to transform our minds by thinking as god thinks um and so when he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind whose thoughts are higher than your thoughts if you aren't forgiving yourself um then you're looking to yourself for salvation but we have to remember that God sees us differently. So um, God wants us to think, to see ourselves how he thinks of us. And that's how we were able to think of ourselves. And when we do that, um, because we know that our family and friends have forgiven us and we know that God has forgiven us because he says it in his word. Um, and he covers us with the merits of Jesus and most precious blood and he and that's when the peace that surpasses all understanding um, surrounds us thank you so much Kim thank you very much okay so pastor alluded to the situation of the action of the sons, specifically Simeon and Levi. So here's my question. Clearly, God did not condone the revenge of Simeon, Levi, and other brothers involved. But was Jacob's inaction following the violation of his daughter what God would expect of him? I'll say that again. In light of what happened and Jacob's inaction following the violation of his daughter, was that what God would have expected of him, you know, this patriarch? So let's have your thoughts. Let's have your answers to that in, from those in church as well as online. Let's hear from you. 
Um, yes, so. So Jacob was on the move again. And soon the number of his sons went from 11 to 12. And Benjamin, his last son, was born. So, Sister Shanika, um, what tragedy happened after Benjamin's birth? Genesis 35, 16 through to 19, please. Before I go on to this really sad tragedy, I want to comment again on demons. I think I'm very, be very careful what we're saying there because it's going into shaming territory. Yeah. Even though I'd like to know why she was gone, I ask it for the context situation, not to come at her to think why, why should there is context because understanding the reasoning why. But even if she did go off alone, there's no reason at all why it should have to end in her being assaulted. Yeah. Too often we're getting told different things, like women shouldn't be wearing this, shouldn't be wearing that, they shouldn't be here, shouldn't be there. Whether you're wearing certain clothes, whether you're out at dark at night by yourself, whether you're drunk, there is never any right for anybody to ever assault you. Despite if you're maybe not doing things in God's moral way, it doesn't make it right for someone else that's in a moral way to violate someone, which is a heinous thing because sex is a gift from God. So whether she was out on her own, whether it's because she was doing the wrong thing or venturing out or she was upset or wanted to make new friends, there was never any right that should have happened. So it's, yeah, she may have been in the wrong place. doesn't mean that because we're in the wrong place, danger should be inflicted on us. It's never, ever okay for women to be attacked and assaulted. So we've been really careful what we're saying, how they're coming across like that, because shaming women for what happens to them is not okay. Yes. But no. back to Jacob. No, that's fine. Actually, Sorry. before you come in, Shanika, um, I just want to go back a bit. So, because following Jacob's concern of surrounding nations, and this is the point, right? So now following his concern of what's going on um, and the slaughter and demolition of the city of Shechem, God told him to go back to Bethel. So hold your point for now, um, Shanika. But Sita, if I can just bring you in. You know, what happened specifically? Genesis 35, verses 2 to 4, verse 7 and 13 and 14. I've just picked out some specific verses from this chapter here. So Genesis 35, verses 2 to 4, verse 7 and 13 and 14. What happened then after jo Jacob recognizes what has happened? What goes on next? Over to you, Sita. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New International Version. Um, so Genesis 35, verse 2 to 4. Um, so Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak of Shechem. Verse 7, there he built an altar and he called the place Al Bethel, because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. And verse 13 to 14, then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him, Jacob set up a stone, a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him, and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. Um, so after Dinah's violation and the um, subsequent slaughter, the family seeks another new beginning, and um, God orders Jacob to settle at Bethel and build an altar there. And Bethel is the place where God first revealed himself to Jacob upon fleeing from Esau. So, but part of this fresh start was for Jacob and his family to get rid of all the foreign gods and to also purify themselves. Um, and through it all, God protected them from interference as they journeyed. Okay. Um, so, so, Shanika, just on this point, as opposed to what I asked you before, you've got anything to add in terms of those actions that Jacob wanted his family to do at this time? Yeah, I think it's really interesting to see the way idolatry continuously follows God's people. And again, more questions. Why does family have idols in the first place? Like when Rachel took her mm -hmm. why do they have them? Again, more questions. But I think it's really key to look at with Jacob's experiences of late, particularly, you know, the humbling at the hands of God and just the protection that he needed. 
he, I think it really emphasised the importance of putting God first and serving him only. So with this, this new fresh start, it's like another fresh, get rid of all of the idols, we're only serving God, we're putting him first as it should be anyway. Mm. And there was clearly a recognition here from Jacob that, you know what, in order to come to God, to worship him, to, to seek the guidance from him, we need to be right. And there's a, there's, there's a strong message here. But let, let, let's hear what's coming in online, Pastor. So bearing in mind Jacob's focus now and his action, although previously there was apparent inaction, what are our online folks saying about that, please? <laughs> you know, the, the conversation about Diana is just going on. And I think... Let me just take the gist of the point. I mean, Angela Green said it, Rochelle made the point. Um, a lot of people are saying, Why, what was she doing in this space? Well, here's the point that is coming through. Number one, that bad things can happen in bad places. But here's, here's, here's the point now. Bad things can happen in good places. Two. Mm -hmm. So that's the thought. I've summarized all the thoughts rather than reading people's individual comments. I'm going to read a point here which I think will, you know, I mean, sadly, um, in, in some spaces, it's, it's a sad commentary on that point. Um, someone is saying we need to be careful where we send our children. Um, we can be putting them in harm's way, even in good places. So it's something that we need to think about, Elder Johnny. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll move on from that point. Erlene says, Jacob knew, that, knew what forgiveness was all about, and he was willing to forgive those who trespass against him, both the young man and, and Simeon. Um, Doriel says, Jacob knew God, so his silence was maybe that he was leaving vengeance to God for the violation of his daughter. But later on, Elder Johnny, when his son slept with his wife, he was silent. So there seems to be a pattern of silence that is following Jacob. You know, sometimes you have sinned so much, uh, and, and even though God has forgiven you, 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 you have lost that sense of, of wanting to challenge people lest they bring your sins up. Maybe, I don't know. That's a thought. But here we go. Here's, here's the point you made, Elder John, and I just, I just wanted to, to make this point about Jacob. Every time Jacob did something wrong, he went back to Bethel. Remember a couple of weeks ago, you asked about having a reflection point? Yes. And so this is, I've made a note in my quarterly. I'm going to share this with the members and those our, 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 our online members too. Bethel, here Jacob met God. Bethel, here his name was changed. Bethel, here he renewed his covenant. Bethel, here Jacob's family was transformed. Mm -hmm. Every time that Jacob got messed up in life, he, he would go back to Bethel. And there he, God reminded him that the ladder that was extended from heaven is still available. Amen. Amen. So, so here's the point. Here's the takeaway point. Even in his silence, he recognized that God was still available. And he kept going back to God. Mm -hmm. And so here's the point for all of us. Um, no matter what happens in your life, keep going back <laughs> to your Bethel. And that's why, Lord John, you, you ask the question, do, do you have a place that you can go to mm. when you find yourself between a spiritual rock and a hard place? Yes. Over to you, Elder John. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, Shanika, uh, coming back to your point. So, Jacob was on the move again, and soon the number of his sons went from 11 to 12 as Benjamin, his last son, was, son was born. Um, so what tragedy happened after the birth of Benjamin? Genesis 35, verses 16 to 19. Thank you for your patience. Okay, um, I'm reading from New King James Version still. When they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was as her soul was departing, that she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. 
So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. So Jacob has another son, now he has that perfect wealth. But in spite of the birth of another son, he sadly loses his great love. This is the one he spent 14 years working with. This is like a rom-com. She would have been the one at the end that he married. She would be the prince at the end of the fairy tale. His great love, Rachel, he's lost her. And that has got to hurt. I'm sure people who have lost their great loves in their lives can empathize with the hurt that Jacob's feeling. Imagine that conflict, you've got another son and then you've just lost this great love and you're traveling. It's probably a, a huge amount of pain that I can ever feel. People who empathize with this horrible pain that Jacob's feeling at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So Sita, it doesn't end there. What other woes does Jacob have to deal with while mourning the death? of his beloved Rachel. Genesis 22 and 29, please. Genesis 35, sorry, verses 22 and 29. Okay, so I'll be reading, I'll still be reading from the New International Version. And um, I'm only going to read the beginning of verse 22 and then I'll read verse 29. So Genesis 35, verses 22. Um, while Israel was living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. Um, and then verse 29, then he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, old, full of years, and his son Esau and Jacob buried him. So there's, there's quite a lot of series of events that um, has taken place here. The beginning of um, verse 32, the beginning of verse um, of, sorry, verse 22, um, we read of Reuben's sin with his father's concubine. And Reuben was the firstborn, so we might have expected the best conduct from him and for him to most seriously have received the covenant of his father. Yet here he sinned um, in a most offensive way against his father and his entire family. And then in verse um, 29, Isaac passes away and both Jacob and Esau um, had already been brought together by God's hand, and now they work together again, united by the death of their father. Yes, as they bury their father after that. I mean, Pastor touched on earlier that, um, you know, Reuben, the eldest son, um, why he would then go and do such a violation as, as, as taking his father's handmaid. But, you know, there's, there's so much more to come. We're, we're running out of time. So, Pastor, let me take your final online comments before I come back to our panelists for their takeaway points. Um, right. Um, Adonai Health and Wellness Center. To me, Jacob seems to have make, make an attitude of humbleness and peaceful attitude amongst the storms in his life. So as he gets older, he became a bit much calmer. El Chico, heartbreaking events kept occurring in a dysfunctional family, which is what the lesson makes, but God still uses them to fulfill his will. Grace being highlighted all throughout, mm. which, is, which, is the, which is the crooks of the lesson. Vernice Cox says, Jacob had come to the point, like Abraham, and trust God fully. We too, as Christians, uh, must come to this point. Um, uh, uh, just Tanis Guy says, I can't pronounce that one properly, we must remember that these Bible stories do not give us all the information about each issue. Bible stories have an inbuilt bias from the author. They are not, they're not all value-free. Um, I, I, I understand the point he's making there. When, when, you know the, when you know the mess that God has forgiven you from, aren't you compassionate to those around you who are in the same condition? Thanks for that, Sister Erlene. The church must answer the question, is Ephraim and Dan saved? Um, I'll leave that up to you, Rodney. You're, you're a scholar in your own rights. Um, Bev, we must always go back to the place. We must always go back where, where we met God when we are in trouble. He mm -hmm. will never leave nor forsake us. That place is my Bethel. Mm -hmm. uh, Raquel, who I haven't seen, welcome, Raquel. I haven't seen you for a long time. Thanks for your thoughts. I do, I do believe that Jacob was silent due to the fact that he must have had a discussion with Shechem's father due to the fact that the men of... Shalem agreed and, uh, to and actually were circumcised. Jacob actually, um, and she's making the point. Um, here we go. The debt, the debt of 
Rachel at the birth of Benjamin should serve as a reminder in our modern age of the need for compassion and understanding for those who have lost mothers and, and, and children during childbirth. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's a very powerful thought yeah. there, that we need to have compassion. But here's my thought, here's my thought. Here is just, this is just my thought, Elder Johnny. Be careful what you pray for. Um, Rachel was always praying for a child, and it caused her, it took her life. It's a sad commentary, but here's a point, here's my point. Be careful what we pray for. It's deep. It's deep. Panelists, we come to that time. Can I have your takeaway points? Going to you first of all, Sita. Yeah, so um, there's so much that I can take away from this week's lesson study. Um, but one of the things that stood out to me the most was that Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. And in, um, in her book, Ellen G. White, um, Page Arts and Prophets, on um, page 173, I believe, um, she writes that the greatest victories to the Church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth or the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chambers with God when earnest, agonizing faith lays hold upon the mighty arm of power. Mm -hmm. I think we make things more complicated than they should be. Um, and we forget that God has already gone before us and paved a way for our lives. So we don't need to worry because, um, we, we worry because we're sinful, but we tend to do things in our own strength. But Jacob has shown us that it's in those unseen moments, those quiet time moments when no one is looking, where we can pour our hearts out to the Lord. Those moments are when God can truly intervene. Okay, thank you very much. And Sister Shanika. Sadly, we live in this dysfunctional world, as we can see in the Bible and as we see now, but revenge doesn't do anything. Two wrongs don't make a right. Let's not shame anyone. Let's just thank God for his grace, for his forgiveness, that he changes us, that he has our back, and he will take beauty from ashes. And also, please, as well, don't shame anyone. If someone makes a mistake, ventures into a wrong place, it doesn't mean someone should have the right to do wrong to that person, make another mistake and violate that person. God does not want that. He loves us. He wants the best for that. And he wants everyone to be safe, for men to show love and protect, and for women to feel safe and not violated and shamed. Thank you, Shanika. And Pastor? I think my takeaway point is this. God seems to love the ragtag bunches of this world. And no matter how messed up we are, whether we are the abuser or we have been abused, God is willing to step in and to be a part of our lives. And as messed up as Jacob was, as messed up as his family was, you know, during the, at the death of his father, um, we see the 12 tribes, the names been listed. And um, from that tribe, God works. Mm -hmm. I mean, my prayer is that God will work with me as sinful as I am. May his mercy rest not just with us, but with even those who are sinning. As um, Jennifer says, grace and mercy still lingers. Amen. This week's lesson has reminded us that even having a new name such as Israel or Christian, doesn't make us immune to the struggles ahead. If you find yourself wrestling with God this week, be sure to hold on to him for a blessing. Spare a thought for Father Jacob. Just when he was thinking he's now witnessed the worst of his sons at Shechem and Reuben even, but now comes Joseph master of dreams. I'm looking forward to this week's lesson, uh, next week's lesson study. Be sure to study to find yourself approved. Thank you very much. Over to you, Sister Claude. Good morning again and happy Sabbath. Is there any first time visitors here this morning or visit, anybody visiting this morning? Raise your hands. No? Nevertheless, we hope you have been blessed today by the word of truth and throughout the day we, we pray that throughout the day, it may continue to fill our hearts with light. As we continue, um, I would like to 
extend um, to the congregation. Um, a little, somebody to, um, two of our congregation to share a little nugget of the lesson that they have learned. So we asked Brother Patrick, if you could stand up and share with us what you have learned to, um, throughout the week. Um, Jacob wrestled with God and received his desired blessing. He was given a new name, Israel, which means he who wrestled with God. The new name reflects his struggle and the identity of an entire people. Jacob's fight will be ours as well. His fight was so intensely human. He needs his identity to evolve the same way we need our identity to evolve life challenges. We will all have our time of Jacob's trouble when we are alone with God, and we must lay hold on him before the morning breaks. That's before Jesus comes. Amen. And Brother Colton? Happy Sabbath, everyone. Two points that I would like to raise. God holds the bigger picture in his hands. God's vision is all-encompassing and everlasting, while our vision has its limitations. Two, God is long-suffering and his mercies and grace endures forever. We have all attempted to take matters into our own hands. We have all schemed, we have all exercised deception to acquire things that we want. We see so many dysfunctionalities existing within the family of Jacob. Dysfunctionalities also exist in our families, in our relationships, and in how we deal with each other at home. God is still merciful and long-suffering enough to steer us in the right direction and forgive us. We need to reach that point in our lives just as Jacob, whereby we spend time in prayer, confessing our sins, recognizing that Christ is the only one we can and must depend on. We all need to go through that wrestling experience with Christ whereby the words will be uttered, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And finally, the trials will come thick and fast. Now is the time for us to pray without ceasing because there is power in prevailing prayer and unyielding faith. Amen. Amen. And on that note, let us bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we come this morning, we have hearts for wisdom and understanding. You have given it to us. We thank you, dear Lord, for your word. Help us, dear Father, that we may apply it to our lives. Lord, help us to know that you are always there with us. Whatever our downfalls, whatever we have done wrong, Lord Jesus, you will use us to glorify and to bring forth your word. We pray, Heavenly Lasting Father, that you may bless each and every one that bow before you. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you may um, continue to be with us in our service, divine service, and we ask, dear Lord, that you, ne you may never leave us nor forsake us. You may always be there with us because you have told us so. Bless us now in our endeavors, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. But before we go, can I make an announcement for, from the um, Sabbath School team? If there's anyone want to um, order um, any Sabbath School book, we've asked that you can see myself or Sister Valsi or Diane Trott. That's the quarterly for the next um, quarter. If you wish to order, you can see us. We can order that for you. Thank you.